you can have the same seed phrase on a bunch of different hardware wallets at the same time. There are two questions on Reddit I see all the time. What if the manufacturer of my hardware wallet goes away? Can I still recover my funds? And I've got a Trezor one and I've bought a Trezor T. Uh, you know, how do I move the funds from this one to this one? For this video, what I've done is restored this seed phrase here onto a bunch of different hardware wallets. And uh, basically, we'll just be looking at the way that you can see the same accounts, the same transactions uh, on all these different wallets and uh, how that works in a fairly transparent way. And if you haven't already done so, hit subscribe. That way you can stay in the loop about content I make to help you find your way in the crazy, often hostile environment that is cryptocurrency. So if you have a look on the screen, what we can see is the same Bitcoin transaction represented in Ledger Live, uh, in Trezor, in SafePal, in Shapeshift, uh, and in Electrum. I'll put them all on the screen at once and you can see, for example, that if I make a new transaction here, that it will actually appear in all of these wallets at the same time. And uh, again, that is because the same keys are now being stored on all of these different hardware wallets that I have. Uh, and I can use any one of them to send a transaction that will automatically stay in sync across all of the other ones. When people ask the question of, you know, how do I move my funds from my old Trezor onto my new one? Uh, often what's going on here is people are misunderstanding how their hardware wallet works. You know, a lot of people when they're new in the space basically assume that their hardware wallet is like a USB stick. That, you know, the crypto they have like lives on there rather than living on the blockchain. It's basically your seed phrase being stored in here that is your wallet. And that all your wallet does is provide a secure way for you to use this. Uh, you know, it doesn't store the crypto in the wallet or anything like that. Uh, but the other thing is that there's actually nothing, you know, Trezor specific about the way that your wallet stores and uses this seed. And that means that you can move between different vendors. If the hard wallet supplier you have goes out of business, you can import your seed to a new wallet and you're off and running again. This highlights just how important it is to keep your seed safe. If someone finds your 24 word seed, they can restore it into a software wallet, a hardware wallet, and they'll be able to access all of your funds, even if they don't have the pin to your physical device. And you won't know that they have that until it's too late. If you wanna have two or three different wallets from different vendors, one of the big advantages of doing this is that time to time, there'll be issues that come up with a particular hardware wallet and from a particular vendor. You know, maybe there'll be an update in Windows that breaks things and causes driver issues or, uh, you know, those kinds of things. And sometimes having uh, a second wallet from a different vendor can be great because their implementation may not be impacted by that change uh, or might get remedied much faster. The other thing that can happen sometimes is you'll find that some wallets support some features and others don't. And for example, for wallets like SafePals and EliePals and things like that, you know, often don't support advanced features like signing messages. Having a second wallet can also be really useful if you're trying to move all your funds onto a new seed in that it makes it much less stressful to be able to have uh, both accounts sitting there. So you can see the funds moving from one to another. You can confirm the send and receive addresses from one to another on the hardware wallets, rather than having to do things like import your seed into a software wallet and send it that way, or to create a paper wallet, BIP39 seed and send the funds there and then import that into your wallet or send it all onto an exchange or, or all, all of these different sorts of things. It helps you to get familiar with the process of restoring your seed onto different wallets and it also means that you could experiment with things like multi-signature. Though I would definitely say that multi-signature is an advanced feature that you really, really, really need to be familiar with what you're doing before you start playing with that. It is worth considering that if you want to have multiple wallets, that not all of the wallets support the same currencies. And for example, a cold card is a Bitcoin only wallet. So if you're someone who holds a bunch of altcoins, having a cold card might not be for you. Uh, likewise, things like a safe pal actually only support using one account per crypto. So for example, if you have multiple Bitcoin accounts on your Trezor, the SafePal will only allow you to access the first one. Never mind the fact uh, that different wallets have different levels of support for things like SegWit. The other thing to consider is if you have your seed on multiple hardware wallets from multiple vendors, you're actually exposing yourself to essentially all of the potential security breaches on both. Though it is worth mentioning that using a good BIP39 passphrase uh, is actually quite straightforward to set up and will mitigate most of the risks around key extraction. 
while also increasing the security of your offline seed backups at the same time. I've done a video on that before, and just make sure that if you do use a BIP39 passphrase, that you include this as part of your backup plan. If you're really worried about the security of your seed, you might do something like have a second hardware wallet, maybe a cheaper one, like a Keep Key. You know, you can get them for $10 if you KYC on Shapeshift, and they're available for like $5 during Black Friday sales. Uh, and you might have a second wallet that you keep, that you set up, that you uh, get familiar with using, but then that you wipe and leave uninitialized just there if you need it, rather than buying too expensive hardware wallets to have as a backup. If you think it might be worth getting a second hardware wallet, you're not sure which one to get. I've actually got a summary of lots of different hardware wallets, different features they have on my website, and I've got affiliate links there. If you find my content useful, if you find the information on that website useful, you can buy the wallet using those links and help me out in the process. Thanks for watching, I hope that was helpful. Hit like if you think that other people would find this video useful and hit subscribe if you'd like to be kept in the loop about future content I make that helps people stay safe in the crypto space and to recover if they get into trouble. If you have any questions about this video or a topic that you'd like me to cover, just leave a reply.